Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 264 of our trip around the United States. Today, we are getting things started off from Cape Girardeau, the only inland cape in the United States with over 200 years of history right here in the making. We're gonna take a small tour through the town, let you see the downtown area, a few of the sites, and then we're gonna get started into our miles for the day. Today we have 330 miles to cover as we work our way along the eastern edge of Missouri, north. Now at some points we'll be hanging inland just a little bit, but we'll be coming right back to the edge again and continuing north all day long. From here in Cape Girardeau, we're gonna pop up north just a little bit before we go ahead and head west through Marble Hill. Once we get out as far west as we're going, we're gonna turn north again and head in through Farmington and St. Genevieve and then continue that northward trek all day long until we finally bring things to an end in Bowling Green. Today's schedule has an outdoor military equipment museum in it. It has an art exchange, it has some large geocaches, some highly favorited geocaches, courthouses, and some interesting sites along the way. There is going to be a lot to see today and a lot to do. And I'm hoping that we can find all the caches we want to and get to see all the sites before the sun goes down. Odds are pretty good because we're getting started pretty early in the morning but we gotta get a move on if we're gonna have any chance of making this happen. So let's go see what today has in store. Come on, let's go. Let's kick things off here in Cape Girardeau, the largest city between St. Louis here in Missouri and Memphis in Tennessee, with a population of about 40,000 people. The city is named for Jean Baptiste Girardeau, a French soldier who established a temporary trading post in 1733. The settlement itself can trace its beginnings all the way back to 1793, when the Spanish government granted a French Canadian the right to establish a trading post here. Then, in 1799, settlers founded the first English school west of the Mississippi, right here at the Cape. By 1808, it was ready to incorporate into a full city before Missouri even achieved statehood. There are intricately detailed murals to be found all over the city, whether hidden in alleyways or facing out along Main Street from the side of businesses. The best and largest of these murals can be found out along the flood wall, which lines the banks of the Mississippi and protects the city from high water events. The behemoth of these giant murals is the Mississippi River Tales mural, covering nearly 18,000 square feet spanning the length of the downtown shopping district and featuring 24 individual panels. They quite literally paint a picture of the area's history, including events like the early Native American inhabitants, the platting of the city in 1793, the transfer of Upper Louisiana from France to the United States in 1804, Missouri gaining statehood in 1821, the coming of the railroad in 1880, the big freeze of 1918 to 1919, and the completion of the Bill Emerson Memorial Bridge. There is plenty to see and do in this city, with more than 90,000 people coming in daily to work, shop, and play. Before departing the city completely, we make a trip to the northeast part of Cape Girardeau to visit Cape Rock Park. This park is the original location of the trading post established by Ensign Gerardo, for whom the city is named. This 21-acre park is mainly undeveloped in an effort to promote the natural area as it would have been back in those days. And with a small climb to the top of the rise, you can get a breathtaking view of the Mississippi River spread out below you. To be considered a cape, an area must be a headland surrounded on three sides by water. If that headland is long enough, it is better known as a peninsula. Cape Girardeau is one of only few places in the world where this inland cape occurs along the banks of a river. The cape in this case refers to a rock promontory overlooking the Mississippi River. That very rock was unfortunately destroyed during a railroad expansion. But that memory lives on in the local history and has become a part of what helped Cape Girardeau become what it is today. Coming out of Cape Girardeau into Jackson, we are faced with an interesting spectacle next to the medical office of Dr. Charles Pewitt. Looking out the window, waiting for your annual physical, you will not be able to help but notice the display of military equipment here that he refers to as the Spec Ops Plaza. Weapons had always been a lifelong passion of Dr. Pewitt, starting with his single shot 22s when he was a child and escalating to the point where he decided to start a museum right outside of his business. 
It began at a convention in Las Vegas where he acquired three 19th century cannons from British Man of War and it only continued to grow from there. His collection stands on display, not just for his patients, many of whom are veterans, but for the public at large to come check out for free and appreciate these different pieces of military gear. Along the banks of the Upper White Creek, we stop off at the Bollinger Mill State Historic Site. The park here was established in 1967 with the intent of preserving both the mill and covered bridge that predate the Civil War. The main site was closed for renovations, so we did not get to complete a full tour, but we did get to enjoy a look around the area before hitting the road and getting on with our geocaching for the day. Unlike the last couple of days, we were never really alone in the hills or out in the woods. Instead, we were always hopping from one city to the next. This meant not only a lot more targets to choose from, but a lot more variety in those targets as well. So we picked the ones on the list that had a lot of favorite points and were not disappointed in the GZs that they brought us to. Some were hidden pretty deep, requiring you to dig down and uncover the prize, while others were sitting out in plain sight, just waiting for you to get the right angle. We have managed to make quite a few finds this morning, but all of this geocaching has made me quite hungry. If only there was a place around, I could get a bite to eat. Of all the cool things that we've seen in small towns across America, <laughs> this one, this might be one of my favorites ever. Hungry? Grab a snack at the snack attack box because they just have a giant mailbox here filled with snacks for some hungry kids who want to come by or maybe some hungry adults and get a little tasty treat. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. All snacked out, we come into our afternoon bouncing from one county seat to the next, beginning with Bollinger County's Marble Hill with a population of about 1,400 people. Don't let that small population fool you though, as this is the largest city in Bollinger County, which has about 10,000 residents. To be fair though, that is not a particularly difficult title to hold when you are also the county's only city. A distinction that is held since it was established in July of 1851. Next up is Greenville, the county seat of Wayne County with a population of a little under 500 people. The county is named after General Anthony Wayne and the city is named after one of his most famous deeds. In Fort Greenville, Ohio, he signed a treaty with the Native Americans after defeating them in the Battle of the Fallen Timbers. Not too far down the road, we hop into Fredericktown next, the county seat of Madison County with a population of about 4,500 people. This city saw the stirrings of a beginning all the way back in 1715 when local Indians guided French explorers into the area. It immediately turned profitable as a lead mining operation. Wandering our way through the lead belt region, we next find our way into Farmington, the county seat of St. Francois County with a population of about 18,000 people. The city was first established in 1822 as Murphy's Settlement, named for William Murphy of Kentucky, who had first visited the site back in 1798, when it was still under Spanish rule. Then we reached the city of St. Genevieve and the county seat, the oldest permanent settlement in Missouri with a population of about 5,000 people. As early as 1735, French Canadian colonists had made their way east of the river to organize this European settlement along the banks of the Mississippi River. It is named for St. Genevieve, who lived in the 5th century, the patron saint of Paris. And not only is this the oldest city in Missouri, but it is one of the oldest colonial settlements anywhere west of the Mississippi. While the city may have began under French rule, it was ceded to Spain in 1762 after a defeat by the British. Somehow, despite more than 40 years of Spanish rule before becoming a part of the United States, the city still retains much of its original French heritage. Finally, as we approach the end of our day, we enter the city of Union, the county seat of Franklin County with a population of about 12,000 people. With the sun setting down on us, we know that this will be the last county seat that we have a chance to visit today. Founded in 1826, the city is named for the idea of political unity. Now, whether or not it's achieved that political ideal in its nearly 200 years of history is not for me to say. What I can say for sure is it is always a good day when Aichan and I are completely disinvolved from any politics. All right, it looks like that is going to be it for our day. We began our morning in Cape Girardeau and from there we've been working pretty well north through the majority of the day here. We've been in cities, 
all day long. We have not been in rural Missouri today, and we've gotten to see quite a few cool sites, and more importantly, quite a few cool geocaches. The one standout of the day, of course, beside Cape Girardeau, was coming into the oldest city in Missouri, St. Genevieve. We really enjoyed getting to tour the old downtown area there and everything it had in store for us. Right now, we've made it into Union at the Franklin County Courthouse, and it looks like this is as far as the daylight is going to carry us today. The sun is sinking quickly, just on the other side of that courthouse, and we are going to be out of light by the time we reach our next targets for the day. Somehow, some way, we've managed to fall a little bit behind today, and I'm not sure exactly where that happened, but we are still three counties from completion, which means we've got at least a couple hours left to go until we make it to Bowling Green for the night. But rest assured, Aichan and I are going to continue to push north through the evening to get to where we need to be to start the day again fresh tomorrow. Thank you guys for joining us on this tour of the eastern edge of Missouri. Can't wait to see what the next couple of days have in store for us. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.